So in this video, uh, I'll be introducing you to the Courier platform. In particular, I'll be showing you how to create a very simple REST API using the Courier platform. And in the latter part of the video, uh, I will also try to show you the API management capabilities that the Courier platform uh, provides you. So what is Courier? Courier is a digital platform as a service for delivering new digital experiences fast. So when it comes to meaning what these digital experiences are, in today's context, that means you enable your applications, your organizational data to be exposed in a meaningful manner. To let that happen, you have to create new APIs, services, and integrations with other systems. Corio enables that. And it enables you to create new API services and integrations in quick time. It mainly embraces three concepts, speed, simplicity, and security. It provides speed by its versatile uh, low-code, pro-code uh, mechanism to create uh, new services, integrations, and APIs. And it provides simplicity by providing or abstracting the complexities of cloud native infrastructure by enabling you to deploy uh, your services and integrations uh, in quick time with simple clicks. And it also has built-in security, lifecycle management and multi-stage deployment control together as one streamlined process that brings uh, best in breed uh, security capabilities uh, that your applications and digital experiences demand today. Let's dive in right away. So you can access the Corio uh, web page uh, by navigating to wsudu.com slash Corio. So once you are here, you can uh, try Corio and uh, you can sign up with uh, your Google account or the GitHub account. So I already have uh, the Google accounts, account signed up. So I'm gonna right away log in with my Google account. And uh, because I'm already logged in in this particular browser, I'll be right away taken into the Corio page. So this is uh, the Corio home page. Give it a few seconds, it should show up. There you go. So you can see the user logged in. You can navigate to the documentation here. You can get help from the community that's uh, behind Corio development uh, and uh, there is a developer portal which I'll be introducing later on in the uh, demo as well and uh, you see uh, Shaz uh, as the person logged in and uh, you see two organizations uh, which is one uh, under my name and there is another one called WSA. so I'm gonna use WSA as my organization and uh, you can have as many organizations as you want depending on uh, the subscription that you have. So under this, you see different users or rather different projects. So you can create a project for your uh, own uh, to keep uh, a virtual separation of whatever you do. Uh, if things needs to be under one single project, you can group everything together. So I'm going to create a project in my name and take it. So time to create your first component and uh, I can go create. And when you come here uh, on the very first page you see a bunch of uh, things that you can do. You can create a REST API which is what I'm going to do today and uh, show you the, the functionalities of uh, the Korea platform that makes you develop REST APIs fast and uh, there is a REST API proxy capability uh, for you to manage your backend uh, APIs uh, you know, which is deployed and running somewhere else and you can enforce policies upon that API you can use the REST API proxy you can create manual triggers and schedule tasks uh, and web hooks, uh, particularly listeners for um, uh, different other 
web sub uh, technologies available you can do that and uh, the choreo uh, will be having support for web socket and grpc uh, very soon as well and if you go underneath you will also see a lot of samples for you to get started with so you can start with a greetings service or a hello service and so forth uh, but i'm going to start right away with this uh, rest api so i'm going to create, create an api from scratch and give it a name uh, in my uh, rest api what i'm going to do is basically i'm going to uh, query a github uh, query github uh, by providing a github organization name and fetch all the repositories uh, that's under that organization name so so let me name my rest api as uh, github repo stats and uh, you can uh, treat either one of these so because everything that you develop in Curio needs to be backed by a repository particularly github repository Curio also provides capabilities uh, in built to do that or you can also point your own uh, github repositories as well so that helps development easier so i'm going to use the Curio provided uh, or Curio managed repository for this simplicity and uh, when you do that thing uh, it does its work it creates a pipeline of uh, as you can see uh, it sets up a github repository and CI/CD pipelines to do uh, all the tasks that we will see later on easier such as uh, deployment as I mentioned that it provides a simplicity when it comes to uh, abstracting away the complexities of cloud native uh, deployment and uh, infrastructure and so forth so let's give it a few more seconds and uh, this should bring up my project so uh, yeah so this brings up my project uh, so this is where I'm going to work on my REST API logic and uh, as you can see uh, it provides me uh, with a template which is uh, for a very simple service it's already implemented and uh, you see a bunch of details here like develop deploy test uh, manage and observe observe and so forth so we'll be coming to all of this uh, later on um, and you see a branch as main so all what it's synonymous to what you uh, would guess with a github repository or git uh, there is a main branch so that's what it represents and uh, also you see other uh, controls here and also you see a very important button a uh, prominent button called edit code so this is where our majority of time will be spent uh, in, in, in development mode so let me click that so what it uh, will bring is it will bring a very uh, nice concise uh, uh, graphical view of what I'm trying to do, what you are trying to do with uh, this REST API and also it will uh, show you a corresponding code of your uh, project as well or your REST API that you are trying to build and uh, so this is where Corio shines because uh, it gives you both the capabilities in terms of uh, development it provides you a graphical view as well as a code view and this is what uh, we uh, highlight as uh, Corio providing both low code and pro code view uh, for a developer to develop uh, their REST API and other integration capabilities. So, right, so you see as a REST API, I have a get uh, method here or a get resource and uh, various other things like it's, it has a start and a return and in between some logic so you can see the corresponding code uh, of this now this is the graphical view you also see a workspace similar to VS code so this is in fact VS code integrated uh, with Corio and uh, you see uh, a bunch of files like service.val uh, 
and uh, there are other uh, files which you don't really need to uh, give much attention to so it extracts everything pretty nicely so if you just click on this view uh, it shows you a corresponding code now this code is uh, what we call as a ballerina code so that's what this service dot bell uh, indicates and what is ballerina so ballerina is a a general purpose programming language um, purpose built for uh, cloud native uh, development and integration and it fits quite well with Corio and uh, in fact this low code graphical driven low code capability is very much possible uh, with the ballerina uh, programming language and uh, its syntax is quite concise pretty easy to understand uh, with a a uh, few codes that you write so which we will also be looking at uh, in this uh, video so let's uh, keep both of this open so that you will see how things work and uh, how uh, it interacts so let me first go on here you see this get corresponding here and this greeting uh, uh, method and also it has a parameter called name uh, which uh, is what you see here and it returns a string uh, or an error which we will see how, how to configure here and you see uh, an if condition here so which is what indicator of this block that you see a diamond shaped block uh, indicating so I, I, I don't want any of this because uh, we're gonna start creating a state here from scratch so I'm going to delete that as you can see obviously uh, it deleted so there is a return statement as well i don't want that too so let's delete that and obviously uh, i don't want this name uh, we want a, a separate name so so you also see some errors here because we are just starting up and uh, we want uh, certain changes to come in and as you can see it also offers me various other uh, operations that i can do uh, for a request that i will receive when it comes to invoking this api so first let's go to this edit view which will uh, give me a graphical uh, way of uh, uh, coding this uh, if you know how to code you can right away do it here and that will get represented in the graphical view uh, otherwise you can do it in the graphical view itself so get so let me do uh, get um, Repositories. Get repositories uh, is my name, and I'm going to return. I can keep this as uh, uh, string itself, but uh, Corio provides high level abstractions for popular types like JSON. So I can say I want to return JSON, and that's also because the language that uh, uh, supports this. Which is ballerina has these capabilities to abstract uh, uh, high level uh, types like JSON. So, when I do that thing, it will say uh, JSON, uh, as you can see, it just represents. So, I need to get back to my consumer application, which will be calling this uh, REST API uh, with a JSON. Okay, so now uh, we're ready to code. So, what we're going to do is uh, uh, we are going to use a connector which will connect to GitHub. So that's something a courier provides. Otherwise, uh, when you want to normally do these kind of operations, you will have to learn the GitHub API and uh, all the, the nuances related to that. So courier provides all these things uh, out of the box. And as you can see, there are various other things as well. And uh, uh, of course, I want to rename uh, this name uh, for a meaningful name. Uh, so what it will bring here is to go to this advanced view. You see this query parameter uh, as a string name. So I will name that as organization. So because I'm going to provide organization name as a query parameter uh, to this uh, get resource and then we're going to use the github api to call and fetch all the repositories under that organization so that's the the idea and okay so let's 
if you want to print out this you can use a log statement which is pretty easy and the log statement says info and you can uh, simply print uh, organization uh, name I can say something like this and as you can see it already prompts me and provides uh, some clues on what I might be doing so you can right away select that and say um, right so so let's use the plus sign organization name selected so when you do that thing uh, you see a log statement uh, being printed uh, and uh, yeah it's just a log that you will see when uh, things get invoked so obviously then uh, next up that i need to click on this uh, small button uh, a rounded button which will bring back my uh, palette so i can click on the connectors as you can see uh, you know Corio provides a number of connectors uh, here so there are so many connectors for you to choose from for various different activities that you want to call for uh, calling external services and so forth so in my case i want to use github so i will use it and select that so this is going to import the github connector uh, for my operation and as you can see uh, it has this uh, endpoint uh, name called github endpoint so let's uh, leave it as that and looks like it requires a token so token is a, a security token that we need to provide when invoking uh, a secured api so in this case i will have to generate a personal access token from github and include that here uh, but for security reasons i don't want to do that uh, i want to do it uh, uh, separate or provide that as a configuration uh, to uh, our program or this rest api later on so to do or indicate that uh, to our uh, program or this rest api i can click on this and i can make and tell the program that uh, it's going to be a configurable thing which i will be providing later on so uh, it will be of type string and the configurable name uh, we can give a little meaningful name here uh, maybe github token github token and click save and uh, once you do that you can save the connection and yeah so it's going to pull the packages related to github connector which you can see right away uh, that's happening here and also at the same time it has done something and it just brought a new line uh, into our code as well so it has created a github endpoint uh, which you saw when i uh, clicked the github connector and auth uh, token uh, with the github token which is now uh, indicated as a configurable string over here so uh, so when we later run this thing deploy uh, this query platform will definitely query me and ask you know what's the github token and i will have to provide that unless i do that the the program won't start or the service won't start so that's something uh, to do later so we'll come back to that so this is the initiation and then we come to the next operation and we can add a new action on this particular github endpoint because we want to fetch all the github repositories uh, from this connector so let's see the different operations that this github connector provides so it has capabilities to add comment label create a project create an issue various other things that you normally uh, will find in, in a, a git client right so all these things are supported by github and uh, so courier platform has abstracted all those things by creating a connector and already made uh, that available uh, for you to use in your programs so in my case i'm interested in this git repositories uh, uh, operation and uh, git repositories uh, response uh, or I, I would rather use a 
a different name for that, uh, say GitHub repositories. GitHub repositories. So when we do that, it just does another operation and it graphically shows what's happening and you have called a GitHub endpoint and then you are calling a new operation called GitHub repositories. And of course now you see this thing in a orange color box uh, and, and when you hover over you will see it's an unused variable GitHub repository because we haven't done anything with the GitHub repository variable that comes over here. So as you can see it has responded something called stream. So that's something uh, this ballerina uh, as a language uh, brings on uh, as a useful functionality. So when you do this operation, as you can see, get GitHub repositories or get repositories, uh, not everything will be loaded up to the memory. So that is to save memory. Uh, this is supported through a type called stream. So you can now go through and fetch everything over the stream and load onto your code. Uh, as a repository uh, uh, code if you want to do that thing or else if you want to do uh, one thing at a time you can fetch it one by one and do that operation so that you will save memory uh, on the platform as well right so but in my case I want to return a JSON of all the uh, repositories uh, but now this also brings back a lot of things it, it just responds uh, with a repository and, and there, there are various operations and, and attributes that you find here, create a dat, database id uh, and, and so forth. So let me uh, use this create a dat or else uh, let's see, um, I, I'm also interested in this uh, uh, stargaze account which is uh, an indicative attribute for the number of stars that particular repository has. And obviously, I want to know the uh, the name of the repository as well, uh, so it should be the repository name. Um, yeah. So if I just go through, you will find uh, the name as well. Okay. So now, uh, to when, when I loop through uh, this stream and fetch one record at a time. I want to create a new record uh, just for my purpose uh, of loading things onto the memory. So I need a record to store all this information. So what I'm going to do is click on here because now by at, at this level when you have things uh, in, in this particular variable then you have to populate a new record and, and maybe put into an array of some sort uh, to load everything in one place in memory. So to do this I have this uh, element here and there are various other things like you can create a variable, function, constant, typically what you find in a programming language. So in my case I'm going to create a record. Right. So now this record uh, will have a type of string with field name with say repository name um, okay and then another string uh, let's say uh, as I found out uh, in this case let's find the created at um, created date I'll just use that and then I will have an integer uh, indicating the, the number of stars that's all so I have uh, three uh, attributes in my record and when I do that thing a record will be created at the top layer so I'm going to populate this record for each element of this repository of this stream and maybe put that into an array. So I need to have an array of uh, this record name, right? 
So I, I, will, I will change the record name uh, here as well. I can change the name as uh, repository star and the repository okay. So that will make the record name as a repository star. So it's just a name. So uh, in this layer, I, I need to have a, an array for me to store all the repository details. So one, one, one such repository will be represented as a record. So we need to have an array of records. So I need to have a record array defined on top of this, maybe after this log operation. So let's do that. So I can write a repo here. I need to have a, that will be a variable, right? So I need to create a variable of this uh, repository uh, repository star and I want it to be an array so I indicate that as an array and then I will say repository star and uh, the value expression uh, is, is whatever comes after the equal sign in, in a usual programming language. So in my case, I'm gonna uh, put that as a an empty array to start with. So when that happens, you will see something like this. And again, you see these squiggly lines and this uh, uh, orange color uh, thing around uh, my element to indicate there is an unused variable over here. So next up, um, you know, uh, you know, we were working on this uh, the graphical view for some time. So you can also do work on the on the code side as well as the pro code. As a developer, you might want to do that thing, and uh, I will be doing that to loop through these streams uh, for you to just uh, look at how things work. So for example, this is basically the the VS Code editor, and it will provide all the uh, IntelliSense and other uh, support that usually you find in VS Code and, uh, and, 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 and our Palerina uh, has all the capabilities to do that as well. There is a plugin uh, that has been developed so if you want to develop something on your own you can do that as well uh, downloading from the, the VS Code plugin repository. So to loop through this, uh, so there is this uh, you know, Marina supports the stream uh, loops uh, as an iterator. We can use uh, a record of, uh, I will name as GitHub repo in this GitHub repositories. So basically, for each record, which I now call it as a GitHub repo. Um, and uh, so you should need to have something called check here and I will do an operation something like this. Now for this you obviously need to know how to write Ballerina uh, as a programming language so I use that as a pro code mechanism to do that just to represent your uh, functionalities. So now I have this repository uh, so I need to create a new uh, repository uh, object here, repo. So I'm going to uh, use uh, this view on uh, like curly braces and, and say I have my attribute called repository name and what is that? I can hard code the name but I don't want to because I want to take it from my response and get up repo dot as you can see, it just gives me the repo name and then I want the create date as GitHub repo, um, let's say, created at and then num stars uh, indicated as GitHub repo uh, dot style is counter which uh, we uh, saw earlier. Right. 
and it says uh, okay so an expected an int but found an int uh, question mark so that's because I need to uh, indicate this as a question mark because it may have a value or it may not have a value so that's what it means so I uh, can do that fine and once we do this thing uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my uh, array which I just created here and uh, I'm going to push the repository which I just created over here uh, into the array and uh, perfect so so as you can see uh, the code has nicely progressed here you need to fix uh, uh, semicolon here fine so now uh, I need to finally uh, I have fetched all the repositories loop through and created a record of each uh, response from this tree and pushed each of those record into an array so once I come out of this I will have uh, all the details that I want as a record uh, loaded into a repository star array so now, now I need to convert that to a JSON right so let's do that so I can click on this and uh, I can rather return directly and then use my uh, repository star and I click dot to bring various capabilities and you see something called tool JSON right away and I click OK so this will right away respond back my array which I just created here as a JSON pretty cool right so all done and of course you see uh, and I can hear because it, um, no such parameters name so if I just remove this as uh, this you can document this because ultimately you will be committing this code uh, to uh, a github repository so someone else can work uh, pull this code to a local machine and start working on as well so better making uh, all these uh, uh, meaningful as well the input string organization so i do that so everything is done so at this point my development is done uh, to fetch all the details so yeah so all development is done now my next step is to uh, push all my changes to the github repository which uh, you saw that choreo uh, used its own managed repository so as you can see uh, at the bottom you see uh, a red box so which is saying uh, sync with choreo upstream which i need to do so let's click that and it brings up a dialog box and uh, you can say sync my changes with choreo and it brings all the changes here uh, you can uh, add these changes uh, and then i can say first uh, github code and then i can click ok so this should take a while to uh, do the commit this point uh, uh, all my changes are committed but you can still uh, see this as uh, red so that's because now we need to push all these changes so let's click on this and click push oh, so now all the changes are pushed and uh, the program is now in sync mode now everything is done now uh, we can now go back to our repository and but you can still see uh, things seems to be uh, has, seems to have not updated here in the main view so that's because uh, here in this uh, view uh, we haven't taken the, the latest commit yet so let's take the latest commit so when I click that you get all these latest commits as you can see there are two commits that I have done uh, earlier on uh, from the development stage 
and four minutes ago and three minutes ago and now you can see the, uh, the updated view here so now the development stage is done so next stage is to deploy this so now we can take the latest one and i can configure and deploy here so when i click configure and what it's going to do is it's going to scan through my project and look for any configuration that i need to do as you can remember uh, the github token uh, we didn't specify in the code itself because we didn't want to hard code there so we will have to provide the the github token here so i'm going to paste a github token that i uh, have created uh, but i'm not going to show uh, that in the video because it's a uh, uh, sensitive information either uh, that github token here and and uh, click submit so when that happens the deployment starts and you will see a bunch of operations happening and started 20 seconds ago and it's uh, it has initialized uh, the, the project set up the project environment git checkout uh, typically what normally you do uh, when it comes to deploying a, a project so this is what uh, I, I was talking about uh, this Corio platform being uh, simple because it just abstracts away all these complexities that you normally need to do when it comes to continuous integration, continuous development. So CI/CD uh, is already integrated here. Everything is ready. Uh, with the click of a button, uh, your code will be live uh, in your uh, respective environment. So in this case, it's first going to go in the development environment, and then you can then. Uh, bring that to uh, uh, production environment as well. Okay, so now as you can see, the development environment is ready. Um, uh, it's deployed 12 seconds ago. Built uh, configurables, as you can see, the key configured, uh, which I mentioned if I want to edit that, you can do that. And invoking URL, so I, will, I may want to have it copied here. So I'll just keep that as copy. So next thing is I can either promote or test. So I'll first go about testing this uh, possibly. So let's see uh, if there is any issue with my uh, development. So my endpoint, which I just copied, uh, the security header is provided. It's a, you can also click on the get test key uh, to do that. So when you click on here, it provides a capability for you to uh, test this application right away. So I'm going to use this and uh, I had to provide an organization name as uh, because it's some it's, it's a query parameter my GitHub get, get resources expertise. So let me provide Bellerina platform as the uh, input and uh, let me execute that. So this should go and execute my code which I uh, just deployed in the development environment. As you can see, it has gone and fetched all the repositories that's under uh, the platform and, and brought back all the details uh, in my uh, so repository. And the created date and the num stars are all there. So it looks like the num stars uh, are all zero here. So we have to check why is that. There's something wrong. So, so this is where uh, the continuous development is needed. So you can go back and have a look at the code or the thing that I mentioned. So I have the organization name. Okay. So it looks like uh, I have used Git repositories, but I haven't provided the organization name uh, for the query. So I need to provide the organization name here. So for this git repository, get repositories uh, function, uh, so I can go back and edit that. So there are a number of other uh, properties uh, I need to provide. So here you go, the, the owner uh, was not provided. So let me provide the owner, which is the organization name. And uh, here it has to be a Boolean. So let's uh, use true for that and uh, click save. So when that happens, you provide uh, those variables. So now this is an yet another change. So I have to go through 
the the commit push uh, cycle which I'm going to do right now. At this point, I have brought in the latest uh, uh, commit and deployed it into the development environment. As you can see, the organization name commit, uh, which I have done three minutes ago, and that's deployed here as well. So now let's go and test uh, once more and use the tryout functionality and use the form as my input and let's execute. Uh, yeah, I think I did another mistake. And let's see if this brings back the right response that I'm expecting. Yeah, obviously. So now this time it brings back with the correct number of stars and so forth as you can see. And uh, so now uh, the process is done and uh, the next thing is to promote this to uh, production. So you can go do this and promote this to production and uh, you can either find do a new configuration because I have a configuration which is my github token or use the same configuration at the div which I'm going to use and uh, so that's going to uh, now uh, deploy the code into production as well. Right. So now it's successfully promoted and we can do the testing uh, there as well. My REST API is now available in both the development and production environment and uh, as, as I mentioned you can go about testing it uh, in, in both the environments uh, as well um, uh, which we already did and of course you can see curl uh, command as well as the postman uh, if you want to do that it can you can uh, you know download and import uh, this uh, a client stuff to invoke this particular API uh, using Postman as well. So, so it's pretty simple. So we'll go on to the next step, which is the manage step. You have two environments: the development environment URL and the production environment URL is there. And so GitHub repo stats uh, is my API, and you can learn more about lifecycle status, consumers. Uh, security and other usage plans here. So if I just go to life cycle, you see uh, it shows in a very nice picture of where this uh, API is currently at. It's at the created state. Uh, we haven't published it. We have developed it, but we haven't published it to be used by external parties, which we can do because uh, Corio is a SaaS platform. Once you publish it, it will be available for external entities to use. So let's do that. So when you do this, uh, you get a prompt uh, to publish a connector. So you can either click yes or no. So what is a connector is that uh, now uh, we use the GitHub connector in our project, uh, which I used in, um, uh, in my uh, REST API development. If you think your uh, API which you have developed will be used by other uh, APIs and applications uh, particularly uh, other APIs in particular and for integration purposes and so forth you can publish that as a connector of course in that case it's better to have other documentation everything uh, prepared for your connector so that uh, any developer will be using your uh, connector uh, API uh, will know how to use it so in my case I'm going to click no uh, at this uh, point and uh, yeah so now uh, the the API should be available as a public API if you go to the developer portal so you can go to the developer portal here and so before I go there I want to show you the consumers we don't have any consumers yet so we will be coming to there and documents uh, very important that uh, once you publish an API you publish documents related to how tools and how to use your API and possibly any any other uh, important details that you need to uh, include you can upload that as a uh, document here and usage plans you can go and, and click various things so in this case it uses the unlimited plan and there are various other settings that you can go about 
changing such as the cost configuration and so forth and uh, the the application level security which is by default both uh, at the moment um, and so forth you can do uh, other things like uh, uh, changes to your API level uh, operations and so forth edit uh, some of these configurations here so let me load up the developer portal uh, uh, and this is gonna take some time so let's come back and edit this and in the API level configuration uh, you can see if you want to have some rate limiting uh, on this particular API you can select any of these and I'm gonna use that uh, as the default one uh, so let's click save and uh, go to the observe section uh, will be coming back here uh, and uh, yeah sorry uh, I think uh, I need to apply that for production so apply that to production here and uh, let's go to our development yeah, development portal so now this is a default development portal that uh, the courier provides you can browse all the available APIs there and of course my API is available there github uh, repo stacks I can uh, look for documentation if there are any uh, I don't have because we didn't upload any uh, documents but if you have uploaded you should be able to see that otherwise let's go to our uh, overview section any comments uh, that has been added uh, uh, And so forth you can you should be able to see those uh, as well you can rate uh, your um, api and as and when many people rate so it will just calculate an average here and show you uh, the uh, the rating as well so i want to try out my api so before that let's go to the credential section and i want to generate the credentials uh, for uh, this for someone to invoke uh, this API so so also you find this application section here you can create a, a very simple application uh, uh, it's a virtual application for your application uh, that you represent here in the courier so we can create that and once you do that uh, you can go and create production keys for O2 token and uh, so there are various other configurations like the, the expiry time and everything otherwise you can uh, right away generate tokens uh, for that because it will be uh, O2 protected you will be given a consumer key and a secret and then you can generate uh, a token which you can keep it copied uh, for later use right and so this is regarding uh, your application and of course subscription you can add a subscription for this particular API and you can have different other uh, things now okay so now this application is uh, this uh, application subscribe to this API so we can now go about and uh, try our API as well so let's go here and of course uh, that is for a separate client to access uh, maybe the uh, github magic application which I just created you can do that uh, but you can try out uh, without uh, all those uh, uh, things here as well so you can really use that get the key and uh, use that to call um, as well so it's the same thing uh, that I called at the development stage and now we are calling uh, as a as an application developer uh, will be uh, trying to use this API it might come and try out in the developer portal uh, on this and, and he will recognize this as a, uh, an API that he can use then it goes about subscribing and so forth so that's the the typical life cycle of a uh, API development and uh, so Corio platform provides various other things uh, you can also go into this observe section 
to uh, look at various details about uh, this API call and so forth. And uh, you see a, a set of logs uh, related to uh, your uh, code and so forth. Uh, any errors and stuff will be shown. Of course, there seems to be one error. Um, and, and any, any other details. Now, uh, for this call, there is an 100% success. Uh, it has taken uh, 4.5 uh, seconds because it's been a, a network call. And the latency details and everything will be shown here. And uh, and diagnostic views of any errors and, uh, and, and, and success rates and everything will be shown here as well. And uh, uh, the environment that I'm currently looking at is the development environment. So let me uh, switch back to the, the production environment to see the details. Um, yeah, so in this case, uh, I have a number of uh, success calls and when that happened and the response time details and everything will be provided in the throughput and latency section. And in the uh, diagnostic views, it will show you any error conditions any successful call then what happened uh, and the latency and the CPU usage and everything will be shown here. So this will be much useful rather than building your own observability uh, things for your REST APIs. Corio platform provides all in one uh, together. So let me also show you, uh, so, so if I just go about executing once more, uh, this should bring back call so in the meantime yeah so the api is there so the curl this curl request that you normally want to give is also provided i can copy that just uh, copy that information here and i can use that in a terminal window and that's where you use that so let's see what happens uh, there. So this should bring back uh, all the uh, the response that you will see in the view as well. Now this is just like an application calling it. You can do so as well, and maybe you can create all these things uh, and, and take it as a Postman project or call it from your real application as well. And uh, yeah, so that's all I have got uh, uh, to show as the Korean demo for today. I hope you enjoyed watching the, this video. I uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.